Welcome to my review of Moonstone Island. This is a monster collecting, turn-based combat, dungeons and otherwise exploration game with a sprinkle of life simulator and farming elements. Moonstone Island is now out on PC and Nintendo Switch. You guys told me to play this game. Let's go over everything, the story, the presentation, the gameplay and my verdict. If you are interested in buying this grip that I have on my Nintendo Switch OLED, I have an affiliate link down below with a discount code. Story. Your mom and dad basically kicks you out of the house and you are basically set on your way to becoming an alchemist, I think. There is no character customization. You play as this chick with a blue cape robe thing and I'm not exactly sure why but it looks like my character is constantly crying. <laughs> I mean, maybe she is. Your broom that you fly on, it breaks and you are now on this floating island in the sky. Settling down in your tent that you can place wherever you want on the north side of the island. That's pretty much how the game starts. And you will start to receive letters basically telling you what to do. The town is really small with some NPCs that also have some quests for you in the beginning. You make yourself a red balloon that you can use to float to other neighboring islands where you also find and and beat dungeon-like places. There is a quest list if you are confused. And I felt very confused in the beginning of the game. The NPCs doesn't have a lot of dialogue, but some. There is a friendship level system and you can also go on dates. Like, I promised this guy to meet him on the beach the next day at 6 p.m. But I passed out in a dungeon and I missed it. And he was so disappointed in me that now I can't look him straight in the eye anymore. The story is supposedly that you are to be away from home for one whole year. You get to know the NPCs more through the dates, if you happen to not miss out on them, that is. This game doesn't have a big focus on story. This game is more about gameplay. Now Moonstone Island tries to be a little bit of everything. Let's start with the monster collecting. For your very first monsters, or spirits as they are called, I recommend floating to one of the nearby islands to catch your first spirits. This world is procedurally generated for every single new save file. But for me anyway, I floated south and I met some cute creatures and I tamed them and collected them for myself. You tame them by entering the battle screen and feed them, for example, these white flowers. When the green heart is filled, they will maybe join you. Later you can get spirit barns and you can hatch your own monster eggs and stuff. They fight using cards that works like skills and the battles has a big emphasis on breaking the enemies' armor. So I definitely recommend focusing on that. Armor breaking cards and upgrading them. This is a battle system that I was not a fan of initially, but I found it to be more and more tolerable as I got into the game and understood it more. These upgrades you collect from these shrines when exploring. And exploring is what I enjoy doing the most in Moonstone Island. At first, you can only slowly float around with this balloon, losing stamina in the process. But it is fun to uncover the map, seeing it gradually fill up with tons of islands that you have visited, as you can see here. The red markers on the map, they are dungeons, which will get a little check mark when you have completed them. And you should focus on doing this when you are at a high enough level to do them. These stars are fast traveling routes, and these things are stamina replenishing springs. At all times, you can craft a few basic items on your person, like bridges, that will come in handy more than a few times. Also, I recommend creating a furnace as soon as possible with wood and stones. Also, you can find mines where you can mine copper and iron ores. Another thing I recommend is that you collect as many as you can of the moonstones. And from what I know, every single island has one moonstone on them, which respawns every season of the game. These are valuable, never sell them. Basically, when you have the furnace, you can melt everything into bars and you will be able to make the moonstone enchanter, which will Will make the game open up a lot more for you because with the moonstone enchanter you can create the broom or better yet the glider and this is when the game opens up this makes exploration a breeze literally
there is a lot to craft. A ton of decorative items as well. So I mean, you can go nuts with decorating your home and your environment. You go to bed at night and you wake up every day free to do whatever you want. The goal or what to do next isn't always super clear or obvious though. It's a game where it's very much likely that you will be looking up guides for. I felt that way. Hanging in the subreddit of Moonstone Island for tips and tricks. Highly recommend that. There is technically farming in this game as well, but it's not very interesting. Basically, I just grow the crops that I need, which are stat increasing or increases the taming possibilities. Um, and that's pretty much it. All the dungeons that I have been to have looked pretty much the same with some quick puzzles, corridors and a boss at the end. So they feel somewhat repetitive. I find it difficult to get powerful with my monsters. I have no idea which monsters are supposed to be good or if it is worth it to continue leveling up the ones that I'm already using or not. The game has a big emphasis on deck building, which means you need to cleanse out some cards, upgrade some cards and cards are are important. This is a big part of the game, the actual deck building. There is a calendar too in the game, but that for the most part only shows the birthdays of the NPCs. There are no festivals in this game. The gameplay is very much do your own thing, whatever you like, but try to complete every dungeon. You do have fishing, I've done a little bit of that, not much to be honest. And you can also upgrade your tools, that sort of thing. Now over to presentation. So the graphics, music and performance. Performance is good because it's a pixel game and pixel games tend to do good on the Switch hardware. It would be an incredible feat to mess this up. But you do get the occasional micro lag, but it's not something that I care about. The actual town, which is really small by the way, is by far like the cutest area. And when you step inside buildings, your view is more zoomed in. NPC portraits, they look good. There is also a sleep screen and a death screen where you get to see the main character without the hood on. Also the cat isn't real. I was really disappointed when I figured that out. You see the main character has a cat but the cat isn't real. <laughs> the islands themselves has six different biomes, but they are often repeating. I like the map and that you are able to zoom in on each section. That is coming in handy on the labyrinth-like islands. The dungeons, like I said, they are unfortunately very bland and samey. And I also feel like each item sprite is too small. I would prefer the item sprites to be a bit bigger, kind of like how they are in Ever After Falls, where you can actually more see what the items are. I feel like they are too small, too compact. Ever After Falls, which I'm referring to, is the game that I recently reviewed on my channel. Check that out as well. Also, I have a playlist of all my reviews. Anyways, the monster's animation and sprite work is good. Music is a bit random. Sometimes it plays and sometimes it doesn't play at all. I'm like, okay, good stuff. I like the combat music though. I tend to hum along on that one. Like as a side note, I have seen screenshots of other people's homes and I've seen some really beautiful end game houses. There's a lot to decoration in this game. Verdict. So what do I think? Personally, deep down. It's a very okay game. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. It's a very okay game. It is not bad and it's also not revolutionary, but it's somewhat unique. I'm having some sort of weird fun time in this game, though I think the pacing is very slow. It takes a while to get really into it and I feel like I'm getting really into it at the seven hour mark maybe. I have died in combat countless times, so there is a bit of a challenge here, even though I'm playing on the easiest difficulty. And getting strong and leveling up takes a lot of time, so that is also a grind. I also find managing my sprites to be more complicated than it needs to be, moving them between the medallion, spirit barns, and the science lab. Moonstone Island is a game that will be what you put into it. It is not a game for newcomers to gaming. This is more for experienced players coming from similar games, basically. Since it doesn't hold your hand and the goals are not necessarily very clear at all times. It feels sometimes directionless. It's not a life sim and it's not a farming game. It's a deck building exploration game with small elements of life simming and farming. It's such an okay game. I give it 6 out of 10. 
but I could see people giving it more because it depends on how much you put into it, <laughs> how much you're into the decoration side of the game or the deck building side of the game. There are several elements to delve into. It's definitely not bad. Now, thank you so much for watching this review. Please watch all of my other videos and if you want to support my channel, you can join the channel with a membership down below. Also check out my affiliate links with discount codes. And if you want the skull and coal grip, which is the best grip in the world, I have a discount code down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.